Welcome to Visionaries, where we believe your powerful message is the best way to grow your business and live a meaningful life. Uh, today, we have on Doug Brown. Welcome, Doug. Thanks for joining me. Hey, Dallin. Thanks for having me on the call. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, I'm so excited to get into our conversation today. Uh, but to kind of set the stage, tell us a little bit more about who Doug is and, and your journey to, uh, to the brand you have now. Well, who Doug is, is he still figuring that out? <laughs> Aren't we all then? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a continuous journey. But I, I would say who Doug is right now is the guy that he's had a lot of experience in, in business and life and, and uh, some lots of failures and lots of successes. And uh, what bred, brought me to this place where I am right now, building the brand that I'm building, is I think originally it was my father's business. So I started working at the age of three for my dad and I worked for him all the way from three to 18 uh, until I went into the military. And then, but what I watched was my father building a business, working lots of hours, really hard, but he built it on his back because he didn't really understand how to leverage certain strategies to create the, the revenue growth in the company. Now, don't get me wrong. He fed, you know, five boys and every other neighborhood kid that came through and, you know, they worked for my dad in a lot of ways. So it was a great family business. But um, what that brought me to today is because I've worked with, you know, very large corporations and I've worked with, you know, tens of thousands of small and medium sized businesses. I decided that I wanted to focus on bringing the revenue growth strategies that, you know, we would employ in these very large companies down into the midsize and smaller business market. Yeah. Oh, that's powerful. Sorry. I thought you were going to keep going. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's so powerful too. And we, we kind of talked about this briefly, you know, pulling from those large corporations, right. Who have done so many things right to grow to that level uh, and applying it to smaller, you know, small to mid-sized businesses who need it. Uh, you know, they're doing something right and following proven principles. So why not get that applied? Uh, especially with the amount of businesses that are being built today, you know, and starting from scratch. So um, in what ways do you find um, that you've worked best with these small to mid-sized businesses who need this kind of growth? Well, the, the challenge for small and mid-sized businesses is that, you know, their revenues are small, right? Or smaller and mid-sized. So <clears throat> a lot of times these larger companies, you know, they'll pay high, high dollar consulting fees because they want the results. And so when we apply that to a company doing, you know, even $20 million compared to what say, you know, Intuit would, would be able to invest, um, it's, it's not really affordable for, for a mid-sized business and, you know, a smaller business doing 3 million, it's even less affordable. <clears throat> so, you know, what, what I find is though that the principles and the techniques are the same, wet, same thing. A lot of times these larger companies um, they've made a lot of mistakes and then they found the right thing, right? It's just yeah. like a lot of small and medium sized business. The only thing that really changes is the ability to be able to deliver what the, the, the truth of the, the, um, tactic or the strategy is. And what, so I had found for most of the mid sized and small size businesses is doing this in a group format in a small group actually benefits them more than actually having the one-on-one -on -one consulting. Um, not that, that some of them don't want that and, and some of them can't afford that, but the, the reality is that in that mastermind type smaller group setting, a lot of times they'll learn different things off of owners of different companies more so than they would if they just had the one-on-one -on -one relationship. And, and I would say, I mean, you would, I'm sure definitely agree, right? Like you get different insights from different industries and kind of um, new discoveries that say like, oh my gosh, like this type of industry, although it's completely different than mine, um, I could try applying this principle um, in my own business. And so there's probably a lot of um, value in that shared mastermind that you've, that you've created and curated. So um, what, what kind of uh, additional, I guess, benefits have you seen with doing this, this style group coaching um, for these different business owners? Well, this, the, the information transfer is number one, but the, the other thing is, is the camaraderie, right? It's always nice to have somebody that's striving to go for the same type of things or similar types of things that, you know, let's face it, uh, 
business is easy when you take out the people, right? So when the people, <laughs> so, <laughs> but the people are, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they're essential Amazing. to the business, yeah. right? So, so you know, because people have wants, needs, desires, they have all these emotions, right? Um, oh, yeah. But business is very simple, right? I mean, it's money out, money in equals something. Oh yeah, and and so if we apply these formulas. And then we work on the strategic plays and the tactical plays to raise revenue. It applies to all businesses. And you're absolutely right, Dallin, because the, uh, somebody who owns a restaurant and somebody owns a manufacturing company or somebody who owns a florist and, or somebody who owns a, you know, a, a pro tennis shop, they all have to generate revenue and exceed their expenses and for them to continue to stay in business. So the concepts of doing that are universal, but the application might be slightly different. And one business might say, hey, I did this this way. The other business picks up on it and goes, you know, that's a really good idea. I never even thought of that. And so they get that power and leverage of you know, camaraderie. And a lot of times I put them into <laughs> kind of a boot camp style where it's just like, get right to the point, you know, I brought that from the military when I was in the military. Yeah. And so sometimes people will say to me, they'll say, Doug, you know what? We absolutely, we hate you, but we absolutely loved what we got for results <laughs> <laughs> because you just kept pressing us and pushing us and moving us along in a nice, respectful manner. But, you know, um, I find that's another success trait is when people are in a group setting, they'll bond together even to support one another, even if, they're being challenged in the process. And uh, it, it, it tends to, because of the, uh, who, who said this, uh, Napoleon Hill, you know, the mastermind concept, the collection of brains, oh, yeah. uh, the, you know, the growth factor and the compounding interest factor of a multitude of brains coming together. It's very, very helpful. Yeah. I, and I couldn't agree more. I'm, I'm currently in a business mastermind and I see the camaraderie and I just think of years past before mastermind was probably even a term used in business or just other social circles. Um, I think of um, some of my favorite authors like C.S. Lewis, uh, J.R. Tolkien, you know, Lord of the Rings author, sure. Chronicles of Narnia, right? Uh, they, they were peers and they had other authors and, and uh, knowledge experts of that time join together in a, in a mastermind, right? These social circles where they would share ideas together and get inspired. Uh, and so, I mean, those principles, right. They date back many, many more years before oh, that God. around that needed camaraderie. Um, I, I kind of want to shift gears a little bit, actually. I I'm interested, uh, for you to share more around your, your, your frameworks a little bit. Um, you know, an overview, you don't have to share necessarily all your, all your secrets and strategies, but, um, I'm fascinated by the sales revenue growth that you, uh, that expertise you have and what you help these businesses do. Like, what does that process usually look like uh, as far as like the first step someone should take to feeling like they're doing things right? The first step is getting ultra clear on the truth of the business direction that they wanna go. So the challenges with a lot of businesses and, and even super large ones is, you know, it's great to have all kinds of innovation going on but the question is between the choice and the commitment to what it takes to actually get there, let's get truthful because now I don't mean honest because honest is subjective. We're all like, oh, I really want to do that. Um, but uh, the truth, <laughs> the truth is objectively measured, right? We can quantify it. So that's one of the biggest challenges that I find that a lot of companies have in the beginning. They, they want to grow, but they're really not clear on what level they want to grow to. And, you know, I mean, everybody thinks it's nice to grow from, you know, X to Y, right? But I can tell you, I mean, I was involved with one company and we went from 58 million to 362 million in two years. <laughs> that was not fun. <laughs> so, so, you know, great, we were there, don't get me wrong. Um, and the company did even better later on and sold off for a couple billion dollars. But the, the reality is that sometimes growing too fast is worse than growing too slow. Um, now, when you grow fast, you usually have money and you can arrive at your problems in style, so to speak. But the reality is that uh, getting truthful in the initial direction of where they want to go, once we got that, then it's about assessing, okay, where are we? What do we have as assets? What do we, what, what are we missing, right? Because 
before we even build a plan out, we need to know what's there. And then so once we do that, then we start to assess the, the processes, the people. And once we have that, then it's about building a growth plan out and then following that growth plan. So that's kind of the four step process, if you will, uh, that we take people along. Um, and most of it is focused on You'll have you know getting new clients increasing transactional value the increasing the buying frequency uh getting much more optimized on and around the effectiveness of 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 doing that uh and then you know the people part of it too you know uh, how are we handling the assets that we have in the company what do we need are they being trained appropriately are they being held accountable are there processes in place to make sure that it runs as a system versus just running you know tactically where everybody's wearing 12 hats um, you know, and then looking at that whole customer journey and saying, okay, what's missing, what's not missing, what's working, what's not working optimized. Um, and, you know, how do we increase the, I would say the small percentages along that whole customer journey path to actually add up to a big number at the end. Yeah. Wow. That, that's so, I mean, you can tell, you know, that backwards and forwards, the ability to guide through that process, um, with the, with the group coaching program, um, mm-hmm. that you do, uh, is, uh, is a lot of it that you step into their business and kind of review what is going right and what's going wrong. Is it that you have a team that does that? Like what is, I guess, like how hands-on do you get with these businesses in order to um, assess and help guide them in the right direction? Well, I love to get involved, right? Not, I guess that's my own ego, but the reality is that I know the pain of having to be in positions that other business owners have been in because I, I've been in them and, you know, sometimes we still go through them, right? We yeah. went just through a growth phase last year in 2020, we grew by 22 and a half percent. Um, you know, there were some challenges at the end of the year, like, okay, how do we, uh, what do we got to do for taxes? Because <laughs> we grew in the last quarter very quickly. Um, so I like to be involved uh, as much, but I do have a team that, that handles people and, oh, yeah. and, and we have to have that team. Um, and the team actually brings other expertise and, and uh, points of view to the process for, for people. So we discover more, but in general, I like to be as hands-on as possible. So I do a lot of the teaching. Um, I like to get in and, and first understand their business. So we have them fill out a, uh, a profile assessment on the company, which is pretty lengthy. It usually takes them about a couple of hours, but it tells us through that uh, assessment process, uh, through the profile process, what, what might be their big open blind spots that they're not seeing. And a lot of times, these blind spots, just fixing one to four or five of these things throughout the business just turns the business in a whole new direction uh, and just huge growth, right? No no matter what size they are, um, as long as they're willing to commit to the process that needs to go through. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's actually, you, you hit on a question I was going to have as a follow-up, you know, I, I feel like going through that process, especially if it's, you know, multiple hours to assess and answer questions and really discover, you know, what are the holes we need to plug? You know, how can we fix different areas? It can get probably pretty overwhelming as a business owner, especially one that has a smaller team uh, versus a large corporation to see that, oh my gosh, you know, there are so many issues, we things we need to address. Um, how do you help prioritize a business to know what's my next right step? Um, and how can I simplify this and remove the overwhelm of trying to implement and do everything at once? So the way we prioritize is first getting clear on that, on that business direction, right? Because mm-hmm. this is where people do get into trouble is they, they hyper inflate the real goal. So then they're setting out, you know, budgets for well, these hyper. Like, like it's way too ambitious, uh, too yeah. soon. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I mean, I had a gentleman, he came, uh, just the conversation, you know, he's, he was doing uh, $3 million a year. And I was talking to him and I said, well, you know, what's your goal over the next 12 months? He said, well, I want to be a $53 million company. And I said, hmm. And good, by the way, I never say it's impossible because I've had companies that have grown by, you know, leaps and bounds, right? Um, mm-hmm. So 
so I asked him a quick question. I said, okay, so what's your game plan? He goes, I don't have one. I said, well, all right. Uh, what kind of, kind of budgets do you have put out, you know, for prospecting, marketing, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, we don't have any money. Right. So, <laughs> so it's like, all right, wait a minute. If you're not willing to invest to go from three to 50 million, you know, they're going to have to invest a lot of money into marketing and people and upswing. Right. Mm -hmm. So we had to have that, uh, that, that truthful conversation, like what really is the real number? And then he told me, well, if I grew it by 10% this year, I'd be fine, right? So, but if, he, if we're going for 50 million growth and you only want 300,000, that's a different game plan. Might have some similarities, um, but it's a different game plan. So we prioritize what needs to happen based on the, on the truth of the goal. And then how do we keep them out of, I think you said overwhelm or, um, or them feeling like they're, they're you know, kind of spinning. Mm -hmm. It's very much the same thing. We only work on things that first we, we start looking at what can we get to get a short term return, right? So because it's just, you know, everybody loves to watch marathon runners, but, you know, who wants to run, a, you know, three marathons in a year, right? I mean, <laughs> um, a few people. Yeah. So, However, if I said, look, let's sprint from here to the end of, I don't know, the baseball diamond, right, uh, and, and do that, a lot of people would say, okay, I can do that. So when we get them there, each base they touch, they're picking up revenue, they're seeing this is working. So now the enthusiasm level goes up for the, for the two things, number one, continuing, and number two, working through the long term. So I have this concept I call short, short, long. And it's like, let's focus you on two or three short things first, then a long-term thing. And that's a big mistake that people make. They try to put these huge initiatives in. That's what the gentleman was doing on the $53 million play, right? He was looking at long-term, I can do this. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there has to be short-term strategic and tactical plays that happen to get to that next level. Yeah. Did this answer the question, Tell uh, For sure, for sure. You know, and, and honestly, Part of the questions are just to further expand on these ideas, right? So I, I, there's not a specific answer I'm always looking for. And I think that was so powerful because what I find, especially a lot of those listening or watching um, this, uh, this episode and this podcast, they, they find themselves uh, in need of this growth with their sales and revenue, right? Exactly where you come in to help businesses and a lot of the struggles do come in with some of those main pillars in their business, whether it's the sales, the operations, the marketing, right? Client success. And uh, it can feel overwhelming, um, especially if you're a small team. Um, some are even solo entrepreneurs trying to get out of that startup phase. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it can feel like a struggle. Like, I, you know, there's still stages I'm going through and there will always be new stages uh, I'm experiencing for my own business. And, uh, and so I think it's powerful to hear that idea of honesty versus truth um, that you said even earlier. Uh, and that really stood out to me that like, you got to speak to the truth of the situation um, versus like maybe the honesty or reality of like what you may have in a further future. <laughs> But focus on, you know, like what's the truth now? What can we, what can we do now in the short term to actually help hit these different level and levels and milestones? Uh, yeah, no, I I think that's so powerful. And and how? Uh, so I know you do this group coaching program. Um, is it true that I, I think you're an author as well, right? And you you put out other types of content out there. I, I have to learn yes. about this. Mm -hmm. um, what inspired you to to write a book? <laughs> about your experience in, in these strategies? So over the years, I've written a lot of books. I mean, well, not a lot. I've written four or five books, okay. right? But I never released anything. It was just me writing to, I don't know, get a creative outlet, but to also think through how do I help clients better? That was kind of, kind of it. And then um, a friend of mine at the time, I told her I wrote a book and I wrote it all on one subject matter because I wanted people to understand one of the things that <clears throat> for sales people in general or people selling, getting you know the right amount of qualified prospects is their number one challenge. The number two challenge usually is in the conversion side and, and the number one challenge on the conversion side 
uh, besides messaging is objections. They just don't know how to handle objections. And they, they go to sales training, and I know I did too. And it was like, man, you know, crush that objection, knock that person down, right? And I'm like, this doesn't feel right to me. Like, this is not a win-win play. This is like one person wins, one person loses. So I sat down one day and I started writing a book and I said, you know what, I like to teach the philosophy, the why behind why it happens, if you will. Uh, so I started writing about the whole philosophy and, and psychology behind objections. And I was, as I was going through, I'm like, this is pretty interesting. Even I'm interested oh, yeah. in his writing, right? Yeah, so it's, well, and, and it goes like, <laughs> you know, we, we sell in every form of our life. Like I, you know, yeah. I've got a four-year-old at home, you know, and so it's like, you're trying to sell him on an idea or why yep. you shouldn't do something, right? And so the <laughs> principles apply not just to like sales and revenue, but all areas of life. And it's incredible. Yeah. That's exactly what I discovered too, as I was writing this, right? Because you're, you're, you're right. I mean, you, you're into personal relationships where we're selling all the time. I think Daniel Pink wrote a book to sell as human, right? Um, and the concept is like, look, we're human beings and, and children, especially four-year-olds, uh, they're the most brilliant salespeople on the earth. <laughs> or manipulators you know i guess <laughs> well but th they're brutally honest <laughs> yeah number one right and and number two they ask for what they want mm -hmm. and uh they usually do play win-win when they understand how to play so uh i remember with my daughters the same thing right they were <laughs> and, and and i'd be like wow they just closed that sale on me and i didn't even <laughs> know it was coming <laughs> um, yeah Oh, that's so funny. So, so yeah, I wrote the book and I got the book done. And honestly, it sat there for about a year and a half. And a friend of mine said to me, Hey, I, you know, how's that book going? And I said, Oh, I finished that, you know, a while back. She goes, well, can I read them, you know, read it? And I said, well, it's not released. She said, how many books have you written? I said, Oh, I think four at this point. She goes, can you send me the manuscript? And I said, sure. She said, I just want to see what you wrote. So, a couple of days later, she calls me up and says, hey, Doug, I've read the manuscript. It's pretty good. I really learned a lot out of that. Uh, can I ask you a question? I said, sure. She goes, uh, why'd you write the book? I said, well, I wanted to help people with, you know, handling objections and interpersonal communication and all that stuff. She said, oh, that's really interesting. She goes, um, you know, in the chapter, and she named off a chapter, she said, this, this was there. Uh, what, what do you think of that concept? I thought this. We talked about it for a minute and she asked me two or three or four other questions and then she asked me the ultimate question she said doug did you really write the book to help people and i said sure that's exactly what i did she goes well then how are they going to be helped unless you release the book <laughs> that was the closing question <laughs> or the yeah. test close right yeah and and so i went ah so that's what got the book out and to my surprise, Dallin, um, you know, it, it quickly started being consumed and I think it went bestseller in four countries, you know, in the first 30 wow. days or something like that. So, yeah, so. That's amazing. Congrats on that, by the way. Thank uh, you. Testament that it did help people, right? <laughs> it got did. Hands. Yeah. Well, her, her name is Eustina and, and so we had been friends for over six years and um, we just got married last month, so. Um, oh, no way. Yeah, Even so more I, I, congratulations <laughs> on that. That's amazing. Thank, yeah. thank you. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, if anything, um, you know, she obviously in turn helped you, right? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I <laughs> you told her. Published, you know, <laughs> I mean, turned your life helped. around with a you know, new relationship and in, in marriage. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and, and much, much more. She's yeah. She's been a great, great help and, and, uh, and a blessing in my life. And, you know, sometimes I'll get a little cute and say, you know, I, I, I married you because I became a bestseller and it was your idea, right? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not the question to say to your wife, folks. That's what I want you guys. <laughs> that's the reason why. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I, I think that's such a great example. And, and all the time, like when we hear content, like my business is called content supply. Yes. Uh, and content's such a general word. Uh, and to me at the end of the day, it's, it's the ability to get a message out. You know, like the only way to deliver messages with content. And content comes in many forms in a book. You know, it's a written word. Uh, it's visual. It's something we can hold in our hands. You know, videos are another form, podcasts. But um, that idea that we can have something of so much value that is inside us, but if we're not willing to go out of our way to publish it and get in the hands of people who need it, 
um, then people won't discover or know that value. And I think that's a perfect story and example of how more and more people do need to um, recognize and discover what's in them. And you're like, yeah, I'm writing this. My reason is to help people, not necessarily make tons of money off of it. You know, that's a byproduct, but to help people uh, and then get it out there, you know, and see, and see if it works to test it. Um, and, uh, and so I think it's so amazing, you know, that, that experience as an author and doing that. Um, what would you say to kind of shift gears toward this idea of a vision? Um, you know, it, it evolves, I think for everyone in some form, you know, it's, it's hard to know exactly what the, the beginning to the end may look like. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, what, it, what is your vision? Like what, what's that future you're looking to paint for yourself uh, and your business moving forward? So I have, I have uh, for business purposes, I have two. One is I want to bring this concept. Well, I am bringing this concept yeah. to the, the midsize and small, smaller size businesses, as well as continue to help the larger ones. Um, but I also have the, uh, the desire to build a software program that helps people build relationships and communicate better. And um, so I've been actively working on that now for about a year. And my guess is May-ish, if uh, the developers hit the time frame, <laughs> we'll roll out the, 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 the MVP of, the, of this. Yeah. Um, and again, I, you know, I, I did this to help people because I remember when I was a, a corporate sales rep and my gosh, you know, I had all this business going on and then they tried to bring in this CRM system and said, hey, you got to put everything you have to, you know, speak about somebody, put it in the CRM. And in my head went through this exercise. I'm like, this is going to cost me $25,000 a year in commissions. There's no way I'm doing this, right? So <laughs> what I decided to do is find something that would give people who are selling an ROI, a dramatic, you know, or instant ROI. And so I thought about it a, a lot. And one of the big challenges that people have is staying in contact with one another. You know, we all like to do it through Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's not proactive. It's all reactive most of the time. So I built something that was proactive so that we can help people build better relationships and make them relevant. So instead of, you know, sending out a uh, an email to everybody it's it's personalized to each person but how do you do that in a more automated fashion so that's that's what i'm, I'm doing in 2021 as well as uh continuing the uh the revenue growth oh that's so powerful um keep me posted by the way on that software because um i i've been i'm in the mode right now of finding a good fit software for that front end um you know top of the funnel type stuff Mm -hmm. uh and in those conversations because i mean re at the end of the day like all the all the sales and marketing we do is to build up those relationships right um and so any way to help automate that but do it in a genuine way is is definitely solutions i'm looking for for my business and i'm sure many other people are like yeah like there's got to be something out there that that includes the human element inside of automation um right for leads so i think that's so powerful well, hey, Doug, this has been amazing. Um, there's a wealth of value I know I've taken from this and many other people will as well. Um, where can people learn more about um, the software in the future, You know what you're up to, your books, and, and all, the, all those amazing things that you're up to? Well, they, they can go to the website, which is uh, www.businesssuccessfactors.com. <laughs> 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 Um, you know, we're pretty accessible. So they can send me an email at Doug at businesssuccessfactors.com. Call the phone number 603-595-0303. If they want a free copy of my book, just pay shipping. It's uh, winwinsellingbook.com. Or they can go to Amazon and eat. eat yeah, I tried to yeah. pick it. <laughs> um, because I'm not good at remembering things like that myself. So, um, and you know, I mean, just, uh, you know, I have some quizzes and different things that people can take. Uh, the website is going through another transformation. So it'll, it'll change and hopefully in the next 30, 60 days, a little more. Um, and, but, you know, if they have questions or whatever, just shoot them forward. And, and if we want a uh, conversation together, then by all means, my LinkedIn profile is Doug Brown, one, two, three, four. 
at uh, link, you know, the LinkedIn address. Um, and if it doesn't come up there, go to Berkeley College of Music, Doug Brown. For some reason, that comes up. I don't know why. <laughs> but, yeah. but, but that would be the way to get a little Perfect. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, once again, if you would like to learn more about how you can use your unique message and share with the world through video and create videos that actually are professional and perform, bring you money and all of the results and influence that you want to make, then I invite you to learn more by going to contentsupply.com. Thanks again for listening and we'll talk to you very soon.